Part one, getting started. And uh, one final note before I get started here, actually, I don't want to spend too much time talking about grammar points anymore. Uh, as we read through these phrases, I just want you to see phrase and translation one after another. And the goal, of course, is that with so much exposure to Ilongo phrases, you'll make the connections yourself. And I've probably already said that a few times in the previous videos. So let's get started. Filipino body language. Raising of eyebrows can mean hello, or it can also mean yes. Um, a brief head nod down, like this, could mean I don't know. You could also say ambut while you do it, which means I don't know. Leaving your mouth open can be body language that means please repeat what you just said. I couldn't hear you, or I didn't understand what you just said. Another common thing you'll see is somebody beckoning with their hand and their palm facing down. That means come here. It could also be used to signal down a tricycle or a taxi or something. Common phrases, greetings, and small talk. Kumusta? Hello, how are you? How is it? You'll notice the word kumusta is often spelled kamusta. Either way sounds right, just as long as you make sure to stress the second syllable, which is mu. So, kamusta, kamusta. Either way works. And you probably already know this, but this comes from the Spanish word como esta, meaning how is it, or how are you. So, moving on. Kamusta ka? Kamusta ikaw? How are you? Mustana. That's a greeting similar to the above, but it's a little less formal, and it means, how is it going? How is it now? Or how are you now? Okay lang means just fine. And a Tagalog phrase that means the same thing is ayos lang. So you can say that too if you want. Everybody understands Tagalog. Ikaw ya. And you? What about you? How about you? Maayo man. Pretty good. Now, these things all pretty much mean the same thing. You don't have to think too hard about it. If you're trying to say, I'm doing fine, any of them will work. You could also say, Maayo gid. Or you could also say, Oke okay gid. Or Oke okay lang gid. Or Ayos gid. And that could mean really good. I'm doing really well. Amuman gihapun. Amuman japun. That means same as always, and you can say it either way. Japun seems to be more common in Capiz and Negros provinces, but I could be wrong. Either way works. So kind of a light-hearted response. If somebody asks how you are, you might say, Buhipa, which means still alive. Or you could also say, Gaginhawapa man, means still breathing. Uh, salamat means thank you. Salamat gid. Thank you. And of course, gid just shows emphasis, and you'll hear it in just about any context. Why caso? It means you're welcome, or it's no problem. Paciencia, ciencia, sorry. All of those could mean sorry. So just take your pick. You could also say, I ciencia gid. See, because you can add gid to just about everything. Maayong aga, that means good morning. Maayong udto, or maayong ukto. Those both mean good noon. This isn't a super common greeting because it only happens once a day, so you've got about an hour of the day to use that. Maayong hapon means good afternoon. Maayong kape means good evening. Ako si Elder Soderquist means I'm Elder Soderquist. Ang ngalan ko si Elder Soderquist means my name is Elder Soderquist. Ini akon kaupod si Elder Harmilios. This is my companion, Elder Harmilios. Ini si Elder Murdoch. This is Elder Murdoch. Sin ang ngalan mo? Or anong ngalan mo? Both of them mean what is your name? Literally, sino ngalan mo means who is your name. And that sounds really weird to us as English speakers probably, but that's very common in Ilongo. In Tagalog, people will think it sounds weird if you say sino ang pangalan mo. You have to say ano ang pangalan mo. So Ilongo, it's totally fine. Sin ang ngalan mo, ano ngalan mo, either one. Bo, kabalukalik ka mo magilongo. Whoa, you guys know Ilongo. Bo is like, wow. Jutay lang. 
just a little bit, or just a few. In this case, of course, it means just a little bit. We only know a little bit of Ilongo. Kamay lang. That means just a little. And that's actually more common than jutay lang. But you could say either one. Medyo lang. Kind of. So that's not to be used in the same context. If somebody says, you speak Ilongo, and you say medyo lang, but kind of, it's not very common. I mean, kind of should be used in a different case. Like if somebody says something like, oh, he looked kind of sad, and then you could say, eh, kind of. See, so it's a different context. Uy means hey. I mean, you could probably also say hey, but uy is very common. It's something you can say to get somebody's attention. The inkanakalin means where did you come from or where have you been? This is a very common greeting people use to someone they know. It's kind of like in English we say, what's up? We don't actually expect a long response. It's like we're saying hi. So when somebody says, din ka nakalin, you could just say something like, ah, dito lang, meaning just over there. You don't have to be super specific. So the root word halin actually means to leave somewhere. So if you're asking, din ka nakalin, it means where did you leave from? And because it's such a common phrase, you'll often hear people say it without the nug. And you can just say, din ka halin. I mean, you could even shorten the two I's together, so it's just din. So, din ka halin. Din ka muna halin. That's if you're asking more than one person where they're coming from. Ka means you, but it's singular. If you want to use you as a plural pronoun, you have to say ka mo. So if there's more than one person you're talking to, you can say, din ka muna halin. And that means, where did you guys come from? Where have you guys been? Now, obviously, this is just a greeting. It's a very common greeting. Equally common is the greeting, where are you going? You could say, din ka makato. That means, where are you guys going? If you're just talking to one person, you would say, din ka makato. That means, where are you going? Just like the phrase, where are you coming from? This is not intended to elicit a specific response. It's just a greeting, kind of like saying, what's up, or hi. When you say, what's up, somebody says, nothing. It's just like you're saying hi, they're saying hi back, right? You could just say, sa tindahan, which means to the market. Or, dito lang, which means just over there. You could say, pawuli na kami, which means we're going home now. If you just wanted to say going home, like a response to the question, where are you going? You could just say, pawuli na. If you wanted to just say, I'm going home now, you could say, pawuli na ako. Because ako is the pronoun for I. Kami is the pronoun for we. Ano oras na? Means, what time is it? Wa ay ko kabalo? Means, I don't know. An even more informal way to say I don't know is to just say, Ambot? Ambot? Ha long means goodbye. Or literally it means take care or be careful. But you'll commonly hear it in situations where English speakers would say goodbye. Sigi means alright or okay, go on or uh huh. Okay. This often seems more like a filler word. You'll hear it and use it in just about every conversation. In fact, by using the words siki, tood, te, gani, huo, and inde, you can show that you're an active listener, even if you don't quite understand everything that's being said. So let me go over those in more detail. So, tood means really, te, or te, both mean and then, or then what, and then what happened. So if somebody's telling a story and they pause for a second and you say, te, it can show you're an active listener and it means, and then what? And then what happened? Te is kind of a funny word. You can, if you say it in a really mocking tone, it can mean something like, told you so, or see, I told you. So that would sound something like this. Te, te, gani no, means I know, right? It's just a way to show that you're agreeing with something they say. And gani is a very interesting word. It has a lot of uses. Later on, I'm going to go over a lot more of them, so just hang tight. Ko means yes. Inde means no. Wala or wa'ai both mean none or nothing or no. But remember, you can only use wala or wa'ai to mean no if it's a past or present tense verb negation. For example, if somebody asks you, did you go to Iloilo? You could say wala to mean no. But if somebody asks you, will you go to Iloilo, you would have to say inde to mean no. Tagadiin kamo, where are you guys from? 
Tagadiri kami. We're from here. Or if you wanted to say we're just from here, you could throw in the word lang in the middle. Tagadiri lang kami, which means we're just from here. Joke lang means just kidding. Or if you wanted to use the pure Ilongo word for joke, it would be lahog lang, but that's not very common at all. Taga America kami. We're from America. Shaya taga Fiji. He, on the other hand, is from Fiji. And of course, we've already learned that Sha is the third person pronoun, meaning he or she. And it's often pronounced the same as it is in Tagalog. So Tagalog is always Sha. But sometimes Iloilo natives will pronounce it as Sa. So you could say something like Saya Tagafiji. Kabalo kami magilongo. We know Ilongo. Or Kabalo ako magilongo means I know Ilongo. Nanami an kamo di sa Pilipinas? Do you guys like it here in the Philippines? The Incomo Gay Star. Where do you guys live? If you want to say how old are you, there are three ways to say it. There's Pilakana or Pilana Imo Edad or Pilana Edadmo. The first one is really informal and it's also very common, so if you want to just use that one, that's fine. If you could just say Pilakana and they might say something like Paintiako, meaning I'm twenty. Paintiman ko. I'm also 20. Bata pa kamo. You guys are still young. Kilala mo bala si Elder Ferris? Do you know Elder Ferris? Kumusta na siya? How is he doing now? Pilaka mo mag ulutod? That's the way to ask how many siblings someone has, including themselves. You could respond to that by saying, Apat kami, meaning we are four, or there are four of us. Ikapila ikaw, or ikapila ka. So ikaw and ka both mean you, singular, in Ilongo. In Tagalog, ikaw is only used if it's the first word of the sentence, but in Ilongo, you're allowed to use it throughout the sentence. So either one works here. Ikapila ikaw, or ikapila ka, both mean what number are you in your family? So if you're the fourth one, you could say ikaapat, meaning fourth. Ako man means me too. Pareho ta means we're the same. Pila ang edad sang subang means how old is the oldest. Baintisinko means 25. Now, in Tagalog, it would be baintisinko. But in Ilongo, especially if you go to the really rural areas, you might even hear people say it like baintisinko. But either way works. If you want to sound more like a Tagalog, you could say 25 or 25. If you want to sound more Ilongo or more like a rural person, you could say 25. <laughs> they might think that's kind of funny, though, if you're a foreigner speaking like that. And that means 25. Ang agot ya means what about the youngest? So the word ya, as you might have noticed already, is a way to flip the focus of what you're talking about. So we were just talking about the subang, which is the oldest. We asked, how old is the subang? And now we said, ang meaning, what about the youngest? Pila ka bilog imo kapataan? Means, how many kids do you have? Dukay ka di? Or, dukay ka diri? Means, have you been here a long time now? Or, have you been here a long time? And that's talking about, like, days and months. It's not talking about, like, minutes or hours. If you wanted to say, like, has somebody been here a long time, like, waiting for you, you could say something like, Kaginakapa, meaning, were you earlier still? So when somebody says, Dugay ka di, they're saying, have you been here a long time? You could say, Nagabot ako sang July, means, I got here in July, or I arrived in July. Pila ka nakatuig sa Pilipinas, means, how many years have you been in the Philippines? Why pa isa, isa pa lang kabulan, means not even one, just one month. Here I've got written, Why pa isa pa lang kabulan, means still none, just one month. Dugay ka pa diri, means do you still have a long time to be here? Or are you still going to be here in a long time? Do you still have a long way to go before you go home? So na and pa are some really nifty adverbs that can be used to show the completion or the anticipation of an action. And as you can see right here, with just four words, we were able to say 
do you still have a long time to go here? We just say, Dugay kapadiri, which means long time, you still here. And there are a lot more uses for these adverbs than just the words still and already, but those are some of the most common ones. Pilakapakatuig sa Pilipinas means how many more years will you be in the Philippines? You could say four months na lang, and that would mean just four more months. Obviously, that's using some English words. If you wanted to just use Ilonggo, you could say apat na lang kabulan, just four more months. If you still had 22 months to go, you could say 22 months pa. Sakai ka mo means are you guys going to ride or will you guys ride? It's implying do you guys want to ride. It's a tricycle driver asking if he can give you a taxi ride. And you could reply, sige lang, and that would mean no thanks, just go on. You could add on, lakat lang kami, or malakat lang kami, meaning we'll just walk. The inang inyo simbahan means where is your church? You could also put the word sa in front in this case. You could say, sa di inang inyo simbahan. And that would just mean, where is your church? Or, at where is your church? If the church is near the Shell gas station, you could say something like, Same Shell gas station, which literally means, where there is a Shell gas station. But it's implying something like, at the Shell gas station. That's a very common way to tell somebody where something is. You'd say, Same, and then wherever the thing is. Same Shell gas station, at the Shell gas station. Ano oras matapos ang klase? That means, what time will class end? If you said something like, San o matapos ang klase? That means, when will classes end? As in, what day or month? Medyo gutom na ako. That means, I'm kind of hungry now. Gusto mo magkaon? Means, do you want to eat? Diin mo gusto magkaon? Means, where do you want to eat? Diin ang siar? means where is the restroom and CR stands for comfort room this is how you could ask where's the bathroom somebody might reply ari o meaning it's right here so the word ari means it is here and then the o after it is used to get somebody's attention so like you're asking them to look where you're pointing but if it's not right here they might say something like ato sa piak which means it's over there on the other side and piak is an interesting word. In Tagalog, the word is kabila. It's not only used to mean the other side, like the other side of the bridge, the other side of the road, whatever. It could also mean the other side of the park or just somewhere over there. Ano means what? Sin-o means who? Di-in means where? San-o means when? Anong oras means what time? Nga means why. Paano means how. Pila means how many or how much. Pila tanan or pila sa tanan means how much in all. So if you're buying groceries and you want to know how much it all costs together, you could say pila sa tanan. If you just want to know how much one thing costs, you could say tag pila, which means how much is each one. If you're at a market or something and you want to know how much one thing costs, you could bring it up to the counter and say, Tagpila ini. Mabakal kami bugas. This just means we're going to buy rice. You could walk up to somebody that's selling rice and say, Mabakal kami bugas. And they'll know, oh, this guy wants to buy some rice. He might say something to you like, Pila ka kilo? Which means how many kilos or kilograms. Paano mo ihambal sa ilonggo? Means, how would you say it in Ilongo? You could say, Ano sa Ilongo ang, which is, what is dot 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 in Ilongo? So if you wanted to say something like, what is dog in Ilongo? You'd say, Ano sa Ilongo ang dog? So, Ano ang dot 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 means, what is dot dot dot? If you wanted to say, what is that? You could say, Ano ina or Ano na? So, na is short for ina. And if you wanted to say, what is this? You could say, ano ni, which is short for ano ini. So ini means this, ina means that. And then there's a third demonstrative pronoun, which also means that, which is to. 
except it's different from na because to means you're referring to an object that's far away from you and the person you're speaking to. So if you think about ni, it's something close to you. If you think about na, that's something close to the person you're talking to. And if you think about to, that's something that's not close to either you or the person you're talking to. So let's say you're walking with your friend down the street and a motorcycler drives by and he yells something at you and you can't understand it and then he's gone. So you could turn to your companion and say, ano to, which is like, what was that? And actually, if you append the word man at the end, like, ano to man, that's like saying, what the heck was that? So that's a phrase I've included later on in this book, but there are a lot more fun things you can do when you start to get better at Ilongo. I mean, you could say, ano that man, which is like, what is that? Or what in the world is that? Let's say you're at somebody's house, they're feeding you dinner, and it's really good. So you want to know what it's called. You could say, ano ang tawag sini? which means, what do you call this? Or, what is this called? Similarly, you could say, which means, what do you call that? Or, what's that called? Here's a phrase that's really common. It means, like that, or such as that. And it can imply a lot of things like, that's why, or that's it, or that's how it is, or that. Similarly, you could say, which means, like this, or such as this, or this is why, this is it, or this is how it is. I mean, you'll hear these two phrases all over the place. Amuni, amuna, like this, like that. Sinoni means who is this. Kaisinoni means whose is this. Akonna means that's mine. Imoni means is this yours. Po sagat si mumagi English, or po sagat sagat si mumagi English means wow, you're really good at English. Another great phrase that's really common is amat amat lang, meaning little by little. So that's something people might say if they're talking about how you just need to keep trying. Little by little, you'll learn Ilongo. In Ilongo, there's a very short expression that means let's go, and it's ta. Malakat na kami means we're leaving now. It's just a polite way to leave somebody's company. And they might respond by saying something like malakat na kamo. And that means, you're leaving already? Of course, the Philippines gets a lot of rain. So another phrase that might be useful. Basima ulan means, it's probably going to rain. Or, it might rain. Palangataka means, I love you. If you're talking to one person. Palangataka mo means, I love you guys. You're talking to more than one person. Palangakanamun means, we love you. And it's lots of people talking to one person. You could say, Palangat namun kamo. We love you. That's a lot of people talking to a lot of people. Nahidlo gid kosinyo means, I really miss you guys. So now that we've had a little bit of experience with some raw Ilongo phrases, let's pause for a second and do another quick grammar lesson. Something I didn't talk about yet in the section on Ilongo grammar is what the correct word order is when you start to include things in a DAS or VAOL sentence. Examples of these particles are the special adverbs like also, already, or still, or just, or really, and many more. Um, this is partly because I didn't want to flood you with too much theory before you had anything to apply it to. But you're ready to hear it now. The most important thing for you to know now is that with very few exceptions, such particles as the ones I mentioned above immediately follow the one-syllable pronouns, which are mo, ka, nya, nyo, and immediately precede the two-syllable pronouns, and also those that are shortcuts of two-syllable pronouns, mind you. I will address that in a section further below called shortcuts. So look at these examples below. Dugai kanadi means, have you been here a long time now? Dugay na kodi means I've been here a long time now. Na means already in this case. It comes after the pronoun ka because ka is only one syllable. It goes before the pronoun ako because ako has two syllables. When you need to include more than one particle, things get trickier, but just know that certain particles take precedence over others and there's always a particular word order to follow. I believe the easiest way to learn this is simply by learning as many actual phrases as you can, and soon you'll notice the patterns yourself. For more practice, I address this extensively in part 3 of this book. Shortcuts 
In addition to the stress and glottal stop markers I told you about in the pronunciation section, you may have noticed that some of the words in these beginning phrases also have apostrophes, such as na and simu. This is to let you know that the word is a shortcut for something else. Either it shows that a leading syllable has been omitted, or that two words have been combined into a contraction. You likely won't ever see the stress or glottal stop markers in any other resource than a dictionary, and you'll never see the apostrophes typed or written. I include all of these markers here just to help you learn. In conversation, these shortcuts are very common, and if you want to sound more longo, you should use them as much as possible. When you see an apostrophe before a g word, such as gaistar, it means it's a shortcut for the present tense conjugation naga. Gaistar is short for nagaistar. Here are some other common shortcuts you'll see, and I've included apostrophes for the sake of clarity. Ako shortens to ko. Kita shortens to ta. Naton shortens to ta also. Be careful. Niño shortens to nyo. Saakon shortens to saakon. Saimo shortens to simo. Saia shortens to sia. Saamon shortens to Samon Saaton shortens to Saton Sainyo shortens to Sinyo Saila shortens to Sila This will make more sense, of course, as you become more familiar with word order. But one thing you should be careful about is the fact that ko, with the apostrophe, is short for ako. Don't confuse it with the other ko that doesn't have an apostrophe. They have the same pronunciation, but the syntax is different when you use them in a sentence because one is an actor-focused pronoun and one is an object-focused pronoun. For example, na kao na ko. Ko here is the actor, and so na comes before ko. It's short for a ko. In this case, it's ko as in the object-focused pronoun, gin kao ko na, therefore na comes after ko because it's not short for alcohol.